I would now like to invite to the floor Ms. Yolanda Renee King, youth activist. Good morning. Thank you for introducing me. I would like to expre express my gratitude to the President of the General Assembly, His Excellency Dennis Francis, for the invitation. It is a great honor for me to join you in commemorating this International Day of Remembrance of the victims of slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. I stand before you today as a proud descendant of enslaved people who resisted slavery and racism. Like my grandparents, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King, my parents, Martin Luther King III and Andrea Waters King, have also dedicated their lives to putting an end to racism and all forms of bigotry and discrimination. Like them, I am committed to the fight against racial injustice and to carrying on the legacy of my grandparents who championed social justice and equality. I am here today inspired by my grandparents to be a change maker, to make the world a better place, and to help realize my grandparents' dream. I am a proud youth activist. I am dedicated to confronting issues that challenge our world. It is up to all of us to make the world a better place. And I use my voice to encourage young people to get involved, to get informed, and to do whatever they want to make um, some change. I am appreciative of the opportunity to observe this day with you, as it serves as an important reminder of the transatlantic slave trade and the suffering that arose from it. As a descendant of enslaved people, in the family trees of both my father and mother, my ancestors were among the lucky ones who survived. March 25th, is a day of reflection to remember the millions of men, women, and children who suffered and perished as a result of slavery. We are here to honor the estimated seven million enslaved people who died aboard ships, making one of the darkest, making it one of the darkest chapters in our world history. Earlier this morning, I visited the Ark of Return, a powerful memorial that offers an opportunity to reflect on the legacy of slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. It was a deeply moving and thought-provoking experience, equally memorable as my first visit back in 2019. The tour reminded me that my grandfather wrote about the historical legacy of slavery in his letter from a Birmingham jail. His writings are an eloquent summation of the slavery experience in the US. It also provides a compelling testament to the faith and commitment of the victims of slavery and their descendants to rise up and claim their humanity while making their voices heard. As my grandmother, Coretta Scott King, who was an alternate United Nations delegate herself, said back in 2004, when she spoke at the Harriet Tubman Museum, the sons and daughters of the African diaspora have a moving, important, and powerful story to tell and will be heard. And then she went on to say, our African ancestors came to these shores in shackles, and we were brutalized, oppressed, and suffered unspeakable cruelties 
for centuries. But we had something our captors could not destroy, try as they did. We had a mighty spirit that somehow overcame this terrible legacy and found noble expression in our arts and our creative efforts in every field of human accomplishment. Her words capture the stories and struggles of our ancestors whose resilience and resistance paved the way for future generations. So, it is critical that we shine a light on the past to raise awareness about the historical impact of slavery and more importantly, its lasting effects on our society today. It is a striking reminder that we are still struggling to eradicate systemic racism, inequality, violence, and poverty that continue to affect communities worldwide. Regretfully, we cannot even say that slavery is a thing of the past. In fact, the United Nations has estimated that as many as 50 million people are victims of slavery worldwide today. And broader definitions of slavery place the number at over 100 million. As we recall the past, we should keep our focus on the present and the work that lies ahead. There is much work to be done. Regrettably, we are still fighting the same challenges that my grandfather gave his life fighting for and that my parents have dedicated their lives to resolving. Silence is not an opportunity for my generation. We must continue combating racism, prejudice, and discrimination in all forms by reaffirming our commitment to promoting human dignity, equality, and justice for all. My grandfather had a dream, not just for the United States, but for making the entire world a better place. He talked about creating a beloved community in which people of every race, religion, and nation could live together in peace and harmony and work together for the common progress of humankind. In his last book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community, he talked about the World House, his vision of global interconnectedness and unity in the face of challenges is still relevant today. His dream resonates deeply within me. That's why I'm committed to raising my voice to combat racism, poverty, and violence. While my family and I still to this day have talked about the correct way to be an activist. Everyone can lend their own unique talents to stand up and speak out for what they believe in, to fulfill my grandparents' vision of a better world. I call on young people to lead the way. We must connect via the internet and organize across na national boundaries around the world. This will open up new possibilities for global campaigns to advance human rights and social justice in all nations. I hope that my family's legacy of social justice advocacy will inspire my generation to action and to confront issues affecting our world today. With this shared commitment, let's today affirm the bonds of interdependence that unite freedom and justice-loving people everywhere. And all of the young people in the world should embrace the future with hope, optimism, and radiant assurance that we shall overcome as sisters and brothers of all races, religions, and nations, united and determined, we will build the beloved community for all of humanity, a world house. With this vision, we can put an end to the triple evils of poverty, racism, and violence, and go forward into a more hopeful future. With a fearless dedication to create a more just, compassionate, and peaceful world, the hearts and souls of millions 
are surely with us in this effort as we join together in common cause to create a beloved world community where peace, harmony, and goodwill will reign supreme among all creation. Inclusion, me gustaría compartir mis palabras finales en español. Millones de almas y corazones seguramente estarán con nosotros en este esfuerzo a, al unirnos los humanos en una causa común en la creación de una comunidad amorosa donde la paz, la armonía la, y la buena fe gobierne sobre toda creación. Gracias. Thank you.